Hi, my name is Kelly, and today we are going to talk about Lovenox shots. So if you've had recurrent miscarriages, then there's a pretty good chance that your doctor might prescribe Lovenox for you. Um, it's something that some doctors will prescribe, like even if you don't have a particular blood clotting issue, some doctors say like if you've had so many miscarriages, then just go ahead and try Lovenox. Other doctors want to show that you have at least some kind of blood clotting issue. Um, for me, I had a little bit of like protein S issues, and then I also had PAI1 deficiency, and I also have the MTHFR, but like MTHFR by itself wouldn't mean that you need Lovenox, but if you had it like in combination with other stuff, then it might lean towards you needing something. But Lovenox, basically an anticoagulant, it is a low molecular weight heparin, which is also an anticoagulant. And so it stops you from having blood clots. And the theory is that there might be little tiny microscopic blood clots that are happening like in the placenta or like in the interface between the maternal uterus blood capillaries and the placenta capillaries. There might be these little tiny blood clots that are happening and that can cause um, your placenta to not be, not get as much nutrients and then that can lead to miscarriage. So that's the theory and the reasoning behind using it during mis or like for recurrent miscarriages. Now, if you've been prescribed it, you might be wondering how to give it to yourself or how like maybe for your spouse, how your spouse should give it to you. Um, because I don't know about you, but for me, like the doctors didn't really tell me a whole bunch about it. They weren't like, they didn't like sit me down and instruct me on how to give these shots. They were just kind of like, here you go, take these shots. So this is a video that's going to tell you exactly how to do these shots and most importantly, how to avoid pain when having these shots because Lovenox is pretty, like it burns and it's a fairly unfun shot to get, okay? So I'm going to go through four different tips that I have found. I have been taking these shots for like almost two and a half years, not constantly for two and a half years, but a lot of that time for two and a half years. And we've kind of gotten a system down, me and my husband, and I feel like we are getting pretty good at it and now we kind of know how to not have it hurt so much. So let me share my tips with you. My first and number one tip is all about fat. Yes, fat is finally a good thing. <laughs> um, if you have fat, it is going to make Lovenox shots so much easier. And I'll tell you why. So Lovenox is um, supposed to be injected into the subcutaneous tissue, which is the tissue that is below your skin's, like your dermis, so your skin layer, and above your muscle layer. So that's right where your fat is. You want it to go into the fat, that's where it is most effective for you. And so they, they recommend that you do it around either the stomach or the love handles. Now, I think you should pick, like either the stomach or the love handles, you should pick based on how your personal body has its fat distribution. Some people will have no problem getting a chunk of fat in their stomach and some people it'll be easier to get a chunk of fat from your love handle area. So you have to sort of feel around and you probably know your body better than anybody. So you probably already know where your fat is normally distributed. So like for myself, I just don't get fat on my stomach area. It's like of my whole body, it is my leanest area. So when I first started, I was trying to do it into my stomach because that's kind of like, that's what the doctor told me at first. They say to do it like on your stomach, but not like right around your belly button, just like on the two sides of your stomach, I guess. So I was trying that and holy heck did it hurt. It was like really, it burned, it was painful, it made bruises, I didn't like it at all. Um, and so what I figured out through trial and error and through a little bit of research is that I didn't, my problem was that it wasn't really going into fat whenever I was trying to inject into my stomach. It was either going into some more skin because I had like basically just squeezed skin and it was just like going 
into another layer of skin or it was going too far and hitting muscle and that hurts as well. So for me, I use my love handles because that is where my fat goes. My fat goes to my butt and my hips. So I just don't even bother with my stomach because it's not gonna work for me and I go straight to my love handles. So you have to decide where's the best place for you. Now, if you don't have much fat on your stomach or your love handles, then it, it's gonna be harder. And honestly, whenever I was like, before I was pregnant, when I was going through IVF, particularly like I had lost more weight and I had less fat and it was a lot harder. We were having to, and like in that case, what, what I would do is I would like honestly like contort my body and try to like squeeze so that I would get like as much fat as possible in whatever hip that we were trying to give a shot in that night. So that's the first thing you need to do is find where your fat is and use it. My second tip is that knots and bruises happen and you just are going to have to try to find them and avoid them. So when you start doing this, you're gonna to start to notice that sometimes even though you're doing it perfectly and even though you're doing it into fat and you're doing everything right, you're still getting bruises. And sometimes it just happens. But what you wanna do is you wanna not re-inject back into the bruise. Once you have a bruise, you wanna to try to avoid that. Now, <laughs> this gets real hard after you've been doing it for a long time because you know, you'll probably end up with a whole bunch of bruises and it's hard to find an empty spot. But if you keep on with trying to not re-injecting into the bruise and if you keep trying to get fat, then eventually the bruising is gonna lessen and you'll have fewer bruises to dodge around. Now the other thing you have to dodge are knots. And so that is something that happens under the skin. You'll, you'll notice if you like feel around and it usually feels um, pretty sensitive to the touch. Like when you're feeling around the area where you give your shots, you'll feel like a hard lump underneath the skin. And if you feel that, then don't re-inject into that lump because it will hurt, it will bruise, it will make the lump worse, and it'll last longer. So you wanna to try to avoid those bruises and avoid those lumps. And sometimes, like I kind of end up having to go like up a slight bit higher or down a little bit lower, um, even, though like I don't really like going there maybe I have less fat up a little bit but it's better to do that than to re-inject into a bruise or into a knot and the reason is because I have found that if I re-inject into a bruise then it's gonna make the bruise worse it's gonna get like even bigger and it's gonna last much longer like if I if I have bruises that are only like one injection bruises then that bruise is only gonna last like a couple of days and then it's gonna go away. But if I have a bruise, like which I've had before, where I like didn't do this method and I was re-injecting into the bruise by accident, it'll last like a month or more. It just won't go away. And I think it's just because it was like continually re-injured and it doesn't have a chance to heal. My third tip is that timing matters. So this is something that like, I don't know why they didn't make a big deal of this the first time they gave me my shots, like they gave me my prescription, but then like whenever I went back and asked, they were like, oh yeah, totally. It matters what time you give it. And it's like, oh, you have to tell me this stuff. So these um, shots, the Lovenox, they are good for 24 hours. Now, if you happen to use heparin instead of Lovenox, then those are good for 12 hours. But Lovenox, or it's also called anoxaparin, they're good for 24 hours. So it is very important that you space them out 24 hours. So for example, if you were giving yourself one at night and then the next day you gave it to yourself in the morning, then you've now nearly double dosed or you've like 1.5, you've, you've one and a half your dose because you've given them too close together. And inversely, if you gave yourself one in the morning one day and then the next day you did it at night, then you've waited too long and you've had a whole, like, a whole 12 hours where you didn't have any coverage and you could have potentially gotten some little microclots during those 12 hours. So you wanna to try to do it at the same time every day. Maybe just pick a time that works for you 
And what I've done is I set an alarm on my phone so that it lets me know. And so like I do mine every night at nine o'clock before I go to bed. And so every night my alarm goes off and it reminds me that I need to do it. Now you do have some leeway, like it doesn't have to be down to the dot the same like 24 hours. You have about an hour cushion on either side. So if I set my alarm for nine and that's when I need to do my shot, then I have like about eight o'clock to 10 o'clock where I need to get my shot done. But <laughs> it's kind of like, you gotta keep in mind, if I set my like nine o'clock as my time, but then if I'm like consistently doing it at eight o'clock and then all of a sudden one day I do it at 10 o'clock, well now that window has stretched to two hours. So you, you really do kind of want to keep it like consistent from day to day. You don't want to stretch out that window too much. Now I will also say that I am not perfect and you know, probably nobody is. So mistakes happen and it's okay if you forget. I have forgotten my shot at night once. Like, I don't know what was going on, but we were just busy, we were doing stuff, we fell asleep and forgot to do the shot at night. And then I woke up in the morning and freaked out. <laughs> so I went ahead and what we did was we went ahead and just quickly gave myself the shot at that time. Whatever time we remembered, we did it. And then after that, we kind of went back to our normal pattern of when to do it. So. That day, you know, it was probably a little bit messed up. I did have a little bit of time where I didn't have any coverage and I did have a little bit of time where I was probably like slightly overdosed because I gave two in a day. But um, that's, I mean, sometimes like we just make mistakes sometimes. Don't, the point is don't freak out so much. It doesn't mean that you're going to miscarry immediately just because you forgot. It will be okay. Just try not to forget you know, a bunch of times because then you might create a problem. So that's why I think the alarm on the phone is a good idea. My fourth tip is that if you are still having trouble, if you are injecting into fat and if you are not hitting your bruises, you're not hitting your knots and you are still having a lot of pain when you do the injections, then it might not be you. It might be the needle. So this is my like current stock of my Lovenox shots. And this is from like, they're all manufactured by different people. Um, and this one is manufactured by Apotex. And I have found that these needles are good. Like I don't have any trouble with these. They go in, they come out. They're not like, so long as I'm following these rules, they're not too painful usually. I mean, every now and then you have like a random one that just hurts for no apparent reason. And it's probably because like, you know, we're hitting a vein. I mean, we're hitting like some kind of little, some kind of little capillary, some kind of little something. The point is, these are good, Apotex. But before I got um, a, like a prescription filled and they were from Winthrop. I will, I will put the name on the screen because I do not like Winthrop. <laughs> the Winthrop needles I have found are like terrible needles like if you looked like when I looked at my needles up close when I took the little cap off and like looked at it I could actually see that the needle wasn't even like straight and like flat it had like little tiny like barbed looking things like the needle itself wasn't sharp and straight so those needles hurt no matter what I did and my husband's like my husband is the one that does most of my shots and he would say that like whenever he was trying to like push it into my skin he was like you could tell the needles were like dull and just not good because like he would have to like push and jam and it just like wouldn't go into the skin so that is not how it's supposed to be it should go smoothly into your skin without a problem but if you have Winthrop needles and you're noticing that you're having trouble like getting them in and then they're just like hurting like the actual needle part, then what I did, and I'm not saying that this is like doctor approved because I, I did not even ask my doctor because I didn't really care. It hurt so much. I was like, I don't care. This is what I'm doing. This is certainly not professional. I'm just telling you this is what I did to get through it and it worked for me. What I did was I bought myself some syringes off of Amazon and they were like $10 for a hundred of them. And I tried to match it up to be the exact same syringe. These were 29 gauge syringes um, and they are half inch, which this one is also half inch. 
I couldn't figure out what gauge this one was, but it seems to be pretty similar. Um, and these are insulin syringes. Now, technically, technically, this is a like tuberculin syringe, I think they call it. So it's not technically an insulin syringe, but I did my research and the only real difference is on the units. Like, you know, if you were trying to measure the units, that's the only real difference between the two types of syringes. So <laughs> since I'm not actually measuring anything because this is already pre-measured, it's already filled in here. So I'm just gonna take what's in here and put it into here and that's what I use. Um, so that's why I was like, well, I don't care that the units on this don't, aren't the exact kind of units on this. So what I did was, I'll kind of show you a little bit, but I won't waste this one because these suckers are expensive, but I'll kind of show you what I used to do. Um, so I would take this syringe, you take off that little part, you make sure that you still have the stopper on it. And I would pull this out. Now, be careful because now this is this is supposed to be sterile. So you don't want to just like place this on a table or your bed or whatever. You want to place this somewhere sterile. So what I would do is I would open up this guy and remove the needle or the injection thing like this. I'd remove this. And then now this is like my little sterile environment. And then I would place this into here. And then I would use hold this like level, like horizontal, and then I would pull this off and inject it straight into here. And then once I injected all of this liquid out of this syringe into here, then I would take the plunger back and then put the plunger back on. Now you have to like carefully, carefully like put the plunger just ever so slightly at the tip of it and then quickly turn it this way. So that way you don't like inject the medicine out into the air you don't want to lose the medicine and then you have to like very carefully like hit it sometimes and you have to like very carefully push this up to try to get the medicine so that you're not squirting there is a learning curve to this i will tell you that um but you can do it if if these needles are sucking really badly then this is what i did and it got me through a couple of months of winthrop needles um, I just put it into here and used this needle to like, I took this from here, put it into here and then injected this into my body. And these needles did not hurt at all. But now my pharmacy thankfully has switched from Winthrop and now these needles don't hurt at all. They're just like normal, like basically these two feel the same now. So we don't have to go through all that extra steps anymore we just pull this off and use this one but i wanted to let you know in case if you come across those kinds of needles or in case if you're coming across this issue where you're like no matter what i do this needle hurts then that might be something that you can try or you can talk to your doctor about before you try it so those are my four tips to hopefully help with the pain of lovenox shots uh, the only other thing, the small question that I sometimes see people ask a lot is like about pinching the fat. Like, do you hold the fat the whole time? When do you let go of the fat? Like that whole question. And so what I understand that my doctor has told me that has worked for us is that you pinch the fat before you wipe it with a, um, an alcohol swab and then you inject into the fat and you keep it held because the whole purpose of pinching the fat is to like make sure that the medicine is actually going into subcutaneous fat tissue. If you were to inject the needle in and then let go, then like, then who knows where the medicine's going. Maybe it's going into your skin, like your dermal layer. Maybe the needle's like pushing more in and going into the muscle. So you keep the fat squeezed the whole time that the needle's in so that way it is going into the actual fat. And then when you're done, like as you're pulling the needle out, you can let go. Now, some people worry that like if you keep it squeezed, if you keep the fat squeezed as you pull the needle out, you will see there's like a little bit of a droplet that kind of like comes out of your skin. But I wouldn't worry about that because it's not like a whole lot. It's just one droplet. And what I now know with scientific accuracy is that they say 40 milligrams per 0.4 milliliter in these, 
but this actually holds more than 0.4 milliliters it actually has more than 0.4 milliliters because whenever I did this whole rigmarole with this thing I was able to see that it was like 4.2 or like I guess the right way would to say it would be 0.42 so they give a little tiny bit of excess in this and what my doctor told me is that they purposefully overfill it ever so slightly because they know there's going to be like some room for error like either a little bit oops either a little bit's going to like come out of your skin like that droplet or the other thing is I don't know if you've ever noticed when you're done with these and you pull them out and then you go to push the plunger to engage the safety feature sometimes you'll see like a little bit of medicine that comes out at the ends and you're like oh man I missed that medicine I believe and wh what my doctor has told me is that that little bit of extra is like insurance that they've packed into there so don't worry about losing that little tiny bit. Don't stress yourself over it. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you many days of bruiseless, painless shots in your future.